Hey, welcome to Progressive E. This is our setup of the X9000 controller on their custom vest tool. First things first, we're gonna plug this into our computer. I found that just using a cheap $10 Bunnings USB hub, everything comes from Bunnings, but this works pretty well for me. You'll notice there's two cables here. You've got your ST link and you've got this one that just says X9000. This is basically just a USB connector. We don't need this one. This is for firmware updates only. And when you do a firmware update, just so you know what I'm doing, basically you need to have both these plugged in like so. But for now, we don't need that one. So we can leave it out. You can leave it in. It's not gonna matter. So you're gonna have your same connector that connects to the Bluetooth dongle on your bike. That is to plug in to where that is, we'll do that now. <coughs> True, I just sneezed. So next step, pretty easy. Turn this on. Not sure where your on button is, but mine's here. And if you have two screens, you're extra cool. Make sure your bike is on a stand, because once again, we could be moving the rear wheel for some reason. So just uh, be uh, careful of that one. Okay, so first thing you want to do is turn on your bike and turn your display I haven't had any issues with having the display on and no bugs with it. So basically I'm sticking with turning on the display. It does communicate with the controller. So that makes sense to me. So you want to click auto connect. You can see I'm already connected. Basically a really cool way to tell is you can kind of see your duty currents moving down here. The other way you can do is on this left hand side of the screen, you can go into real time data and you can basically see we're actually seeing some current here and some things happening, obviously really small, but uh, you know it's on. So that's the main thing. And when it's on, it's on. So basically the next step is you wanna go advanced motor and set your motor up. That's normally how I do it. You wanna make sure as well with this program that you load the app settings. So just because what you see on the screen doesn't mean they're the settings in your controller. So if you basically update them or save them, basically you're gonna load the wrong thing and nothing's gonna work. So to basically update and to download, you click the up a arrow for the app and you also want to do the motor as well so you click up on the m and you'll see it will say mc configuration updated come back to the app again it says app configuration updated so at least we know what we're seeing on our screen is all correct so for us i'm running the kors motor so i'm just going to go through this setup again it's pretty easy and i know there's going to be some issues with this so i'm going to show you how to resolve them and how to kind of get things working so i'm going to select this and then i'm going to click right app configuration which is the app down like a download so when i when i basically click this the next thing i want to do is when i come up to foc i know basically what these settings look like for a KO motor and if i now click update they're where they need to be back over in advanced motor basically you'll see as soon as you select this a lot of these things are going to be pre-filled so field weakening is going to matter so my my map's a little bit different to what you'll get, but basically 65% is 300 amps field weakening. Basically, you'll be able to change this here. If your motor direction is wrong, this is where you'll enter this and you'll physically change it here. Just remember, every time you're riding something, you literally have to click on the right app configuration. Otherwise, no matter what settings you put in, if you haven't done right app configuration, she uh, just ain't gonna save. So the next thing for me is basically setting up our throttle and regen settings you want to come through here it's exactly like the phone app that we've been through in a previous video basically you can see you've got your twist throttle this is where you change you can turn that off or on you've got your throttle regen on or off which is the same as like when you let go of the throttle you have a bit of drag that's what that regen is and you can run that as well as the regen brake you see you've got your functionality for your regen brake you can turn this is where you would change it to an accelerator so that's what acceleration stands for or if you want to have it off and not fitted at all you get an error if you turn it off, you would remove that error. So if you don't want that regen brake, basically you just turn it off here. If you don't want a throttle, you can also turn it off in the same spot. And you might want that for testing, or you might just want a bike that doesn't throttle anywhere. And that's up to you, I guess. So you'll come back over to here, you'll see you've got your regen strengths. And these strengths are basically related to the regen brake only, not the off throttle regen, which you can see that's what is in this, in this area here. So I set that to 100 because I basically want that to work kind of, you know, pretty much instantaneous. It still has a really nice feel to it. It still uses the whole lever to basically activate to 100%, but it just means that, you know, it is quite pokey and I have to kind of use my thumb the whole way down to kind of get it to operate. So I put that at 100. So the next step is to basically go through your peripherals once you've done your motor setup. So you'll see 
you can select your bike here. You can select whether you, you know, you can enable your stock bike with the re with the reverse gear. So that's kind of we talked about in a previous video as well. But basically, if you want to use the the EP button as a reverse, you can basically use that, and that's where you would select it. So you could put that as true here, and that would be selected. With the uh, wheel diameter, you want to measure that with a tape measure. Show that before as well. And the next one is basically your gear ratio. So we'll flash up on the screen the gear ratios to suit different size sprockets. And True had said to me before, he's like, what about the tire? That's kind of why you measure this tire diameter so it knows what speed you're doing. You'll come down here. If you basically don't want to run the SW2 display, this is where you'll turn that off. It doesn't work in this current version, but you basically select this and you could get rid of it. The uh, temperature units, we're in Australia, so we're going to use Celsius. The speed unit kilometers, once again, we're metric because we're in Australia. Australia's better, sorry everyone else. Uh, street and race, this is basically the mode that is going to come up as soon as you turn that throttle on. You're gonna see race pop up, or if you want you know, your street mode, that's what it will be. And then mode after reboot, all that means that kind of correlates with this setting here. So every time you get a reboot, it's gonna come back to race. You've got your brake sensor and your tilt sensor and your kickstand sensor here. I haven't got any of these fitted, and this is where you would turn these on or turn them off. It's very similar to the phone app. It's just kind of laid out differently, obviously PC based. Uh, battery, once again, you'll see here that I'm running 20S. So 20S is 72 volt, 16S is 60 volt. Um, we're obviously going up with 22S and 24S. So obviously I've got that selected as 20S. Over here is kind of where EBMX has done some cool work. So you can basically choose 72 volt with a high power harness. It's essentially like a harness that's upgraded from your stock bike. So you might not have your breaker, you might have larger cables. I have larger cables and I don't have a breaker in this in, in my bike install. So I run unlimited and my battery is a little bit different to what other people have got. So that's why I run unlimited. And this is all gonna matter when you come over to your power settings as well. You'll notice in this page as well, you can also change your, this is like your peripherals. So you would have heard this controller has like a a DC to DC converter with 12 volt out, this is where you would start to configure out what these do. So you can see target motor temperature. So this is obviously designed for the coolant pump. You can set that up. You can also trigger these, turn these on and off with other applications as well. So now we're kind of up to the fun stuff, which is basically set your race mode. So you can see kind of the power levels that I run and you're probably like, wow, I wish I had a battery that good. And uh, it isn't that good, but it does it. So you'll see mode one, I've got 18 kilowatt at 500 phase amp. You'll see in mode two, I have 20 kilowatt at 550 phase amp. And mode three, and personally, I ride mode three all the time. I've got it set at 25 kilowatt and 800 phase amps. So I, I actually can't pull any more. The motor won't, my KO motor will not pull any, anything more than 290 amps, no matter what I do. So basically it doesn't really matter where I set this for my setup. I'm never gonna pull 25 amps. I'm gonna be stuck at like 22, 23 kilowatts, and that's purely down to my sprocket gearing. You can also set a speed limit. So maybe you're gonna give the bike to a friend on the weekend. You wanna have them to, you want them to have a pretty average time and you know, put it down to 10 kilometers an hour and just leave them there. You can also do that. So that's basically where you will change that here. And once again, you've got your battery current settings here. So I know I can't pull anything more than 290, so I'll just leave it capped at 295 for this current setup and the current battery I have on the bike right now. And further down, this is your reverse gear strength. This is when you go into reverse. Basically, that's the strength that's gonna be applied. I find 90 is a good measure. Anything less than that, I just find that mode to be too weak. It's like, obviously there's been some design set out so you don't just rip, rip backwards real fast at 800 phase. So be careful, obviously upping it 290, but I think 90 is a safe level that I'm pretty happy with. And essentially, that's kind of it for the main setup. And that's kind of generally all you will touch. And you should, once again, be able to touch the throttle and the bike should roll. Now, if you're getting like a real clunky motor, this is kind of where you kind of need to dive a little bit deeper and you go into the FOC settings right here. So you'll see this screen, it looks a little bit confusing. It's got motor resistance, motor inductance, your LD, LQ differences. So these are essentially your motor settings in VESC. So whatever you do, don't run the wizard for this. It just, it, the numbers don't work. So don't run the wizard and think you're gonna get a better tune than what's here. You just, you're just not. And your issue isn't the settings here, it'll be your whole sensors. Okay, so if you've done all those settings and your motor is still a little bit tweaky, so like it's, it's knocking a bit, it doesn't quite work correctly, you'll come over to this FOC screen right here. So you know if you've got general, you've got FOC and you've got additional info. A lot of this stuff is read only. So 
basically you can't write certain things in here that are gonna blow the controller up, but you definitely can write things in here that'll blow the motor up. So be careful what you do. So essentially you've got all your motor settings here. I don't think you're gonna to need to touch these. These are kind of preset, and to be honest, I, I think they work really, really excellently. So I don't think that's an issue. You'll notice when you come across to here, you've got all your different settings, everything else is here. But what you wanna do is you wanna try to find your whole settings, because the reason why your motor is cogging and doing weird stuff is because you've got a bad, you've basically got a bad hole read. So you wanna basically come over and find hole sensors. So you see this here, you'll notice down the bottom here, it says 10 amp. What you wanna do is you wanna change this to 40 amp and you wanna basically click play. But before you click play or start detection, you wanna make sure the bike's on the stand, nothing's touching it, we're all ready to go. So we'll click play. It'll give you a warning. This is gonna turn the motor slowly, make sure that nothing is in the way. So we've got nothing in the way, we're happy. My bike kinda of sits a bit weird on the stand, so I'm gonna hold it down, push okay. You'll physically watch the wheel move around. It's not a violent kind of like ASI type where it tries to measure everything. Once you've got that, you'll see you've got your whole table results. And if you look at them and then compare them, so you've obviously got hole one, two, three, four, et cetera, as we go. If you look up here and you have a look at what you've got, you'll notice that what I've got written in here is basically exactly kind of what I really need. So see you've got 255, 96, 166. These are pretty close to these numbers. So these are close enough to the point where I don't need to change them. But if you do want to change them, you can. And you might find every time you do a read, you might these might change by one or two digits. But basically, you want to click apply. Once you've clicked apply, you want to make sure you click right motor configuration and make sure you see this green come up here. And then if you come over to your throttle, it should be silky smooth, which it is. And that's pretty much the uh, main setup on the VESC, I suppose, PC app. And essentially how you'd set it up and kind of just a few options you have there. It's very much like the phone app. It's just you can obviously address those whole sensors a little bit easier in my, my opinion. So one issue that I have had with the current software is, or the current firmware I should say, is the motor direction. So I'd physically come down to the advanced motor settings and I would click on invert motor. I would select false, I would then click save. I turn my throttle and my motor would be the right, right direction. I then turn off my key and then turn it back on, my motor would be the wrong direction. So I'll show you how I fix that if you do have that issue and you do have this connection cable. So I basically come up to uh, general in motor settings and literally on the first page it says motor type F FOC. It says invert motor direction. I literally change that to false and then click right motor settings. Never changed to me, it's been perfect ever since. I can now change it in the app, forward or back, and it will save every time. So sometimes you just have to look for a different way to do it if you do have a fault. But uh, you know, it's, it's still in development, it still has a little few hiccups every now and then, but they're so minor, I don't really think it's an issue. Um, but uh, yeah, that's our overview of the VEST tool and how you'd set it up on the EBMX X9000. Thanks very much for watching Progressive E. It'd be cool if you liked, it'd be even cooler if you subscribed. See you in the next one. That's what you